Let's crack some packs of Magic Corset, 8th edition. Hey everyone, it's VM Campos, Magic Fan, Vintage Magic Fan. I've got another Crack-A-Pack video for you. This time I've got Corset, aka 8th edition. Now, this is from 2003. I was not playing Magic at this time. I was playing between 1995 and 1999 or so, so I hadn't been playing at this time, and I don't have any 8th edition cards in my collection. These will be the first 8th edition cards that I ever open. Now, a little history. At this time, uh, Wizards was doing uh, beginner, intermediate, and advanced level booster packs and boxes and products. So you see that labeling. And um, they were calling this core set, but internally it's 8th edition. So they were not labeled via year. That came later. Magic 2010 was the first year that labeled it via the year. So this was originally a set full of reprints. Core sets back in the day were only reprints. So all of these cards were printed in previous expansion sets. And up to this time, there were like uh, 20 or 30 expansions. Uh, I think about 20 expansions by the time we got to Corset in 2003. Because after all, this was the 10th anniversary of Magic the Gathering. So I don't really know these, uh, these characters. This is Phyrexian something, and this is Two-Headed Dragon, and that's someone. I don't know. Anyway... Um, so we're going to see here some totally vintage cards. These are going to be in the, uh, in the first generation of modern card borders. So you're going to see the modern card border, but not the, not the most recent one. And you're going to see white borders. Please do not get triggered by that. Let's see anything interesting in the back here. The best trading card game players are Magic the Gathering players. And the best start with the 8th edition corset. MagicTheGathering.com Cool green colors on this. And over here, a little bit in French. Uh, which is the coast in France. Group Hasbro, etc. Le Bourget du Lac Sedex. And the rest of the stuff here in English. Magic designed by Richard Garfield. Okay, let's open it up. I want to open the booster up as uh, pristinely as possible because I'm obsessed that way. Okay, so back in the day, um, they did not always have rarity symbols or collector's numbers. But by this time, in the sets of Magic, they did. So we have a uh, an expansion symbol and it is colored to show rarity. So this is a common... And there are the collector numbers. And look at those crazy old white borders. Look at them. Okay, so I've never seen most of these cards before. Even though there are examples of cards that have been uh, in Magic, like, you know, back in the day when I played. So let's see if I find any. And I'm looking for some of the big money cards. Those will be Ensnaring Bridge, Intruder Alarm, Bribery, Blood Moon, Grave Pact, just to name a few. But anyway, let's see what we've got here. Razorfoot Griffin, 4 mana, 2-2, two, two, Creature Griffin, Flying, and First Strike. Okay, 4 mana for a 2-2 two, two Flyer with First Strike. Interesting. Shock. Oh, Shock's been around in Magic for a long, long time. I don't know if this is a first printing or what, but okay, this is all good old Shock. I love Lightning. It's my best invention since The Rock. Togo Goblin Weaponsmith. Hilarious. Unsummon, classic card since the beginning days of magic. One green, uh, one blue mana, return target creature to its owner's hand at instant speed. This is the new art, however. Obviously, we've got newer art for it nowadays, but um, uh, this had changed from the original wizard looking at a demon disappearing art. This is Ron Spencer. Oh, classic artist there. Trained Armadon, three mana, three, three, elephant, that's it. Armadons are trained to step on things, enemy things, hilarious. Ooh, Gravedigger, this is a card that's still around. It just came out in M19, right? Same art from, from you know, from 15 years ago. 
uh, Dermic Power, so you know what it does. When it enters the battlefield, return to a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, nausea. Two mana. Sorcery. All creatures get minus one, minus one until end of turn. No fear, no sense. And soon, no lunch. Twiddle. Good old Twiddle with some very abstract art compared to the original one, which I always felt was like a whale carcass. One blue mana. Instant tap or untap. Target artifact creature or land. Uh, what did they just say? Permanent. Tap or untap target permanent? Is that like the new wording nowadays, perhaps? Cinder Wall. One red mana, 3-3 three, three wall. Walls cannot attack. So this has got Defender. Some walls have Defender. Some don't, but no walls can attack. You know, something like that. When Cinder Wall blocks, destroy it at end of combat. So for one red mana, you get a 3-3 three, three that dies right away because it cannot attack. Like, is this is this is a, this is like the most horrible card in Magic ever? Um, yeah, maybe? Holy Day. One white mana, instant, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. So this is this is a white fog. Now, 8th edition does start counting at modern. So this is something that you can play in a modern deck, a white fog. Plague Beetle, one black mana, swamp walk. So if your opponent has swamps, this little 1-1 one -one is unblockable. No one knows whether they were named for the disease they carry or for the speed at which they multiply. All right, we're getting into the uncommons. Here's a Yavamaya Enchantress, three mana. Creature Druid, two, two. Yavamaya Enchantress gets plus one, plus one for each enchantment in play. So you put a bunch of enchantments and she gets stronger and stronger. Her roots connect her to the forest's wishes. Circle of Protection Blue, okay, classic card since the early days of Magic, but with new art, and basically uh, it's an enchantment, two mana, and then you pay one colorless. The next time, a blue source of your choice would deal damage to you this turn, prevent that damage. So it protects you from, you know, uh, air elemental and such. Now these used to be common back in the day, and at 8th edition they changed it to uncommon. Confiscate. Oh, look at that. Do you recognize that guy? That's Teferi, and that's Urza in their early days. Okay, so six whole mana. You control. Enchanted permanent. Okay, so enchant permanent. You uh, can take anything? What I wonder what the wording is for like nowadays, if it's still the same. This is like in Bolas's clutches territory, but that one is... Legendary, and this one is not, so you can totally take stuff. And then we've got, okay, so what they had back in the day was um, all of the commons, then uncommons, then a land, and then the rare to keep you totally in suspense. So, beautiful swamp right here, Bob Eggleton, and then we've got the rare Lurgoif. Okay, cool. So, this is the classic prototypical Tarmogoyf. Um, not as powerful. Um, it gains uh, power and toughness based on the number of creatures in graveyards. Not really a big money rare, but okay. This is the first rare um, 8th edition card I've ever cracked. Uh, so, okay, cool. Let's go to the next booster. For our next booster... Let's see if we get something totally valuable. Come on, and Snaring Bridge. We have Anaba Shaman, uh, Creature Minotaur. Now, uh, check this out right here. This is a quirk that they had back in the day here. The mana symbols in the card, uh, card uh, text box were uncolored. So there were some issues in 8th edition in that people couldn't see the color of the mana symbol, which was annoying in the box here. Notice it's uh, one uh, uh, red mana, and up here it's red. And also, if we get any artifacts, you might notice something odd about artifacts as well. But anyway, it deals one damage to target creature or player. So reusable pingage, but kind of expensive. Coral eel. Two mana for a 2-1. Some fishers like to eat eels. Some eels like to eat fishers. Hilarious. 
Fertile Ground. Two mana, Enchant Land. Whenever Enchantment Land is tapped for mana, its controller adds one mana of any color to his or her mana pool. So this is just uh, more ramp. And uh, being in modern, you can uh, totally ramp to big things. Dark Banishing. Ooh, I love this card. I have uh, fond memories of it uh, after uh, the original Terror card in the early sets. For one black mana and one more, you could destroy any target uh, non-black artifact creature. Well, Dark Banishing was the next iteration of it. For three mana, destroy target non-black creature. It cannot regenerate. Cool art by Dermot Power. Ha! Banishment? Be merciful, say death, for exile hath more terror in his look, much more than death. Willie Shakes, Romeo, and Juliet. Venerable Monk, three mana, cleric. When Venerable Monk comes into play, you gain two life and a 2-2. Age wears the flesh, but galvanizes the soul. Sabretooth Tiger, three mana, 2-1, first strike. To a Sabretooth, all men are mice. Hey, Michael Moore, I thought he was making documentaries, not magic cards. Sacred Nectar. Two mana. You gain four life. Now, this, of course, was back in the day when the flavor text used to come from real world sources. We just saw a Shakespeare quote over there. Over here, we have a Raleigh quote. Um, this was before they focused exclusively on the original lore in magic. Ooh, Mind Rot. Here's another card that I love from back in the day. One that they're still printed. It came out in uh, in Ixalan um, and uh, M19, uh, I think. Three mana, target player discards two cards. What wizards fear most is losing their minds. Elvish Pioneer, a green mana for one one. When it comes into play, you may put a basic land from your hand into your into play tapped. So more mana ramp, nice. Sea Monster, ooh, this is a classic. Six mana, six six. However, Sea Monster cannot attack unless the defending player controls an island. This is with the newer art, Daniel Gellon, even though he'd been there uh, early on as well. It's easy to believe the monster is a myth until you feel 300,000 pounds of myth crashing down on your ship. Elvish Scrapper. Okay, we're going to the uncommons. Uh, single green mana, 1-1. One, one. Uh, green plus tap. Sacrifice this guy. Destroy target artifact. The stories tell of a distant time when machines overran the forests, destroying everything that lived. That time will not come again. Epic. Sanctimony. Two mana enchantment. Whenever an opponent taps a mountain for mana, you may gain one life. So this is back in the day when the color hosers were like so powerful. They were cards to just hated other cards. And back in the day, the color pie was much more antagonistic. Colors that were next to each other in the color pie were friends. Colors far from each other were bitter enemies. Like this, if you were playing white, you hated those red players. There was no such thing as Boros. You wouldn't really combine those colors that easily. Because of this, when, uh, when an opponent taps a mountain, you gain one life. So uh, I kind of miss those days when these colors are much more antagonistic. But, you know, things change and you get more color combinations and more fun. The peasants labor for my profit. I approve. Oh, Shivan Oasis. So, um, dual lands. Obviously the alpha, beta, unlimited dual lands were the epitome of perfect. A land that gives you two colors and was a, was a basic land. Then there were the uh, Pain Lands of Ice Age that you would tap to give you uh, two allied colors, but it would damage you for one uh, point of life every time you did it. Then the next sort of cycle came in these where it gives you either of these colors, but it comes in tapped. So this is so common nowadays. You still have it with Guild Gates and such. Um, and so this is a land, not a basic land type, and you get two of these colors. And again, allied colors, green and red, are together. You didn't see the enemy colors lands until later. Only the hardiest explorers survive to eat the fruit. Speaking of lands, this is also when this set started to, um, or when magic in general started to label them as basic lands, and then the type. So here's a plains. Very cool art. And then we've got the rare plow under. So again, not a money rare. But for five mana, you get a sorcery, 
put two target lands on top of their owner's library. So you slow down the opponent, you move some of their lands on top of their deck. This is something they don't do anymore in Magic, especially in green. To renew the land, plow the land. To destroy the land, do nothing. Druid saying. So this is about two dollars. Not a big money rare, but interesting card that's kind of extinct. Art by Rob Alexander. Now notice, back in the day, down on the little kind of info box, it was a little hard to read. They would change that eventually. And again, just this classic card, uh, just so extinct. White border, original modern border, very cool. Lastly, here's the final booster pack. So again, I never opened these back in the day. These are all brand new to me, and it's just cool to open boosters from a set that I never really played back in the day, but there's something nostalgic about this core sets, even though I didn't play with uh, these cards, and some of these cards never existed during my day. Some of them did, but it's just kind of cool to see uh, these cards that some people nowadays would call their nostalgia sets. For me, I, I never played them. But here's the final booster. All right, Spineless Thug, uh, two mana. Star spineless uh, Thug can't block. So it's a two, two for two, classic bear, but the difference is it cannot block. And this is a mercenary. I wonder if it's still a mercenary nowadays because it looks like a mercenary horror or something. What it lacks in backbone, it makes up for in cruelty. Nice. Uh, there's another Razorfoot Griffin. There's another shock. Ooh, that's exactly how it was in the first booster. It was the griffin and then the shock. Uh, unsummon. Okay, that's another duplicate. Boo. There's another trained armadon. Boo. Am I getting a, a repack over here? There's another grave digger. Boo. Okay, this one's new. Sizzle. Sorcery. Deals three damage to each opponent. So this is when uh, magic was uh, sort of acknowledging that there are that you can play multiplayer. For a long time, early Magic cards only said your opponent because they didn't have a concept of two or more people can play against you. So this one mentions all your opponents. Three damage for everyone. For only three, that's nice. Of course you should fight fire with fire. You should fight everything with fire. Good old Jaya Ballard. Task Mage. Standing Troops. Uh, three mana, one four. Attacking does not cost standing troops to tap. This is before they had the keyword vigilance. They would spell it out. The less you have, the harder you fight for it. Word. Unholy strength. Ooh, nice. So this is a classic card that's been around since the beginning of Magic and one of the first censored cards. Because back in the beginning, uh, the religious types were getting super offended that there were so many demons and devils in Magic. The original Unholy Strength had a guy totally orgasming, and behind him on the wall was a flaming pentagram. Yes, it's true, go look it up. Uh, so then they censored it to later editions where they removed the pentagram. And now, at this point, they have this kind of cool four-armed demon. Amazing art by Puddenhead. And he's totally unholy. For one black mana, enchant creature, which nowadays would be enchantment aura. Enchant creature gets plus two, plus one. Such power grows the body as it shrinks the soul. You know it. Regeneration. Okay, beautiful. This card has so much nostalgia for me. Back when I was playing in fourth edition, 1995, this card had amazing Quentin Hoover art. And here's a, a newer art by... Uh, a Don Rex, uh, but what I remember about it was that the was that the ability to bring your creature back to life with regeneration. So two mana uh, enchantment aura for a green mana regenerate enchanted creature. So basically, bring it back to life. Why should death always have the last word? Lana or Druid. True. Elite Javelinier, three mana. When it blocks, it deals one damage to target attacking creature. So that's nice, this is the uncommon. Precision is frequently more valuable than force. Wall of Air. Okay, classic with completely new art. Uh, three mana, one five, it's a, it's a wall, it cannot attack, it's got defender, and it's got flying, so it can block 
Uh, it can block for days. It's out of the realm of um, shock, uh, lightning bolt, lava coil. Uh, when no falcons fly, beware the sky. Femeref aphorism. So, ooh, classic uh, Femeref nation from uh, Mirage, where Teferi came from. Then we've got the land, uh, Elfheim Palace. So it comes into play tapped, and it gives you either uh, green or white mana. Very cool art by Anthony Waters. I wonder why they didn't use white for other for other things. Look at how much more readable that would be. Look at that. Interesting. The Elfheims are the closest thing to civilization. The elves allow themselves. Okay. Then we get a nice mountain. John Avon. And then the rare is Oracle's Attendance. So this is a 4-mana creature, 1-5, tap. All damage that would be dealt to target creature this turn by a source of your choice is dealt to Oracle's Attendance instead. So you redirect damage over to this guy who can take it. The future isn't sacred, but its speaker is Danny Orizio. Cool art. So there you go, to recap... The rares were Oracle's Attendant, Plow Under, and Lurgoif. Ah, Hans, run! It's the Lurgoif! Classic flavor text. So, not amazing uh, rares at all, uh, but it was really cool to see some vintage cards. Uh, that I never played with back in the day. They were past my prime. But I got some cool lands as well. Look at that sweet art right there. I play black a lot, so I love that art. Mountains looks nice, and so do the plains. Then I got some uh, tap lands. What do they call these? Slow lands. Uh, so kind of uh, cool to make a deck out of these with these classic lands. Classic border. Classic white border. So it was totally worth it. This three pack uh, was very affordable and it's cool to kind of open up interesting cards and different printings of cards that I that I know. For example, these right here, these were in back in my day and this is alternate art that I never had. So that's really cool. Well, this has been VM Campos. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Put some comments down below. Did you play 8th edition back in the day? Are you first starting? magic uh are these white borders triggering you let me know down in the comments don't forget to thumbs up follow me on twitter on patreon and all those cool places vmcampos.com check me out on patreon to get rewards for as little as a dollar at the two dollar range if you subscribe i will actually send you some vintage cards uh not these because I, I never owned these back in the day i'll send you some even older cards if you subscribe at the $2 range. And even if you don't pay anything, no worries. I put lots of great content on my Patreon every single week. I think you should join it. This has been VM Campos, and I'll see you on Dominaria.